After studying this module, you shall be able to know the concept of positive health, learn about positive prevention, positive intervention and positive psychotherapy and identify the various psychosocial resources leading to health and well-being. In psychology, the focus on the positive has lagged behind in comparison to the focus on the negative. However, recently there have been many conceptualizations of positive mental health. In a review of scientific literature of the last 100 years by Salanova, it was found that there were 77,614 articles on stress. 44,667 on depression, 28,814 on anxiety, but only 6,434 on well-being. This shows that the major focus of research has been on stress, anxiety and depression and very little focus on health and well-being. The World Health Organization, however, has given a very comprehensive definition of health. Health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. Although initially positive psychology techniques were developed to advance well-being and optimal functioning in healthy people, they are now being promoted as a complement to more traditional forms of therapy. Positive health describes a state beyond the mere absence of disease and is definable and measurable. Positive health can be operationalized by a combination of excellent status on biological, subjective and functional measures. Research has shown that clinically the positive states of mental health does not follow even when the disorder ends and the correlation between happiness and depression is not close to minus one as would be expected. Rather, it is closer to minus 0.35. The mental disorders somewhat impede but do not rule out the presence of positive emotion, engagement and positive relationships. Positive health refers to well-being beyond the mere absence of disease. Positive health aims to identify health assets by determining factors that predict health and illness. Biological health assets might include high heart rate variability, cardiorespiratory fitness, etc. Subjective health assets include positive emotions, life satisfaction, hope, optimism, and a sense of meaning and purpose. Functional health assets include close friends and family members, a stable marriage, meaningful work, participation in a social community, as well as the ability to carry out work, family and social roles. Hence, positive health is the empirical study of health assets. A health asset is an individual factor that produces longer life, lower morbidity, better prognosis when illness occurs and higher quality of life. Positive health is patterned after positive psychology, an approach in which mental health is defined as more than the simple absence of mental illness but rather as the presence of specific psychological assets of PARMA that is positive emotion, engagement, relationships, 
meaning and achievement according to Peterson, Park and Seligman. Positive health is related to three existing approaches concerned with good health, disease prevention, health promotion and wellness. Health promotion helps people in striving for optimal health. Optimal health refers to a balance of physical, emotional, social, spiritual and intellectual fitness. Wellness is the condition of good physical and mental health, especially when maintained by proper diet, exercise and habits, according to Dunn. There are two reasons why people bother about their health and well-being. First, People desire well-being above and beyond the relief of their sufferings and bringing about well-being, that is, positive emotions, engagement, purpose, positive relationships, positive accomplishments, which act as a buffer against mental disorders. Let us now look at some of the psychosocial resources. Psychosocial resources are the skills, beliefs, talents and personality factors that influence people's response to stressful events. They include self-esteem, optimism, sense of mastery, active coping skills and social support. Psychosocial resources enhance well-being in the following ways. They help people to appraise potential stressors in benign ways. They help people cope with the stressful events that they encounter. Psychosocial resources are reliably related to active coping strategies such as enlisting social support, managing emotional responses to stress, gathering information and taking direct action. They can affect the course of cardiovascular disease and recovery from surgical procedures such as coronary artery bypass graft surgery. There are two major stress symptoms in the body, the sympathetic nervous system and the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal system which is the HPA. In response to stress, these systems are activated and mobilize the organisms for fight or flight. It has been found that people with strong psychosocial resources have lower biological responses to stress. Psychosocial resources foster resilience in the face of major stressors such as natural disasters and health threats. Psychosocial resources play a crucial role in regulating responses to threat and have been demonstrated to beneficially affect both mental and physical health. The resources that have been consistently tied to beneficial mental and physical health outcomes are optimism, mastery, self-esteem and social support. Optimism refers to the expectations that good things rather than bad things will happen to the self, according to Scheer, Ventrop and Carver. Optimism may enable people to appraise stressful events more positively and to mobilize their resources to take direct action in response to a stressor. It has been related to a wide range of mental and physical health benefits including greater psychological well-being, lower vulnerability to infection and faster recovery from illness and a slower course of advancing disease. Hardiness is a set of attitudes that makes people stress resistant. Hardiness includes a sense of commitment, positive response to challenge and an internal sense of control. 
Penn Baker and his colleagues have suggested that catharsis may have psychological benefits. Personal control or mastery refers to whether a person feels able to control or influence his or her outcome. Studies have shown a relationship between a sense of control and better psychological health as well as better health outcomes including lower incidence of coronary heart disease, better self-rated health, better functional status and lower mortality against adverse mental and adverse health outcomes. For example, research has consistently shown a positive sense of self to be linked with lower autonomic and cortisol responses to stress. Social support is the perception of having people in our lives who care for us and will help us in stressful times if we need it. Research consistently shows that social support reduces negative affect during times of stress and promotes psychological adjustment to a broad array of chronically stressful conditions. Social support also contributes to physical health and survival. Research suggests that it is the most significant and reliable psychosocial predictor of health outcomes with effects on health on par with smoking and lipid levels. In long-term prospective studies, initial levels of subjective well-being have been found to be related to later health and longevity. Lubomirsky, King and Diener in a meta-analysis of longitudinal studies found an effect size of 0.18 indicating the standard deviation differences in health outcomes for low versus high subjective well-being individuals. How well Kern and Lubomirsky reviewed 49 prospective studies testing the predictive power of long-term well-being and ill-being. They found an overall effect size of 0.14 for longevity. Cheetah and Stepto conducted a meta-analysis of the prospective studies to examine the association between positive well-being and mortality in both healthy and diseased populations. Positive psychological well-being was related to lower mortality in both healthy and diseased populations independently of negative affect. Positive moods such as joy, happiness and energy as well as life satisfaction hopefulness, optimism and sense of humor were associated with reduced risk of mortality in healthy populations and predicted longevity after controlling for negative states. Subjective well-being, especially positive affect, has been found to be associated with longevity in many samples. In a number of different nations, and controlling for potential confounds such as initial health and socio-economic status. Let us now look at the origins of psychosocial resources. Psychosocial resources have origins both in genes and in the early environment. Early environment affects health not only in childhood but throughout adulthood into old age controlling for other risk factors. The related research has demonstrated that childhood social class predicts health outcomes and harsh early family environment predicts health risks. Research on physical and emotional abuse on early isolation reveals adverse effects. 
Early environment plays an important role in the development of psychosocial resources. Research links economic adversity to problems in the enlistment or use of psychosocial resources including social support, optimism, mastery and self-esteem. A harsh early environment has also been tied reliably to psychosocial deficits including difficulty managing emotions in challenging circumstances and the development of chronic negative emotional states with high levels of hostility, anxiety and depression. Genetic factors are also implicated in psychosocial resources. For example, twin studies indicate that approximately 25% of the variance in optimism is genetically based. Empirical studies suggest that genes along with the early environment can affect how people cope with stress or with aggression. The research on harsh early environments suggests some reliable effects on the coping skills of offspring. Children from risky families evidence higher level of avoidant coping such as trying to tune out stressors as much as possible. The implications The realization that psychosocial resources arise in the early family environment and from genes may mean that these patterns are established very early in life and hence there may not be much room for change. This is clearly not the case however. For example, some research has shown that when people are in a supportive environment, even genes that would normally predispose to adverse stress responses such as depression and anxiety are expressed differently and may even become protective against the adverse effects of stress. A first point of intervention concerns the early environment. Because the damage of low socio-economic conditions and a harsh family environment occurs so early in life, it is important to intervene at the earliest possible time. Interventions with families to improve parenting practices are essential and for the most part appear to be successful. Everyone should be encouraged to build supportive social networks and participate actively in them. Positive interventions The main interventions in positive psychology are aimed to nurture the three roots to happiness, pleasure, gratification and meaning. Positive emotions are increased by exercises that increase gratitude, savoring, optimism and that challenge discouraging beliefs regarding the past. Interventions that increase the good life identify participants' signature strengths and use them more often and in creative new ways. Meaningful life interventions aim to bird identifying and connecting with something larger than themselves by using their signature strengths. An important strategy is to cultivate psychosocial resources for improving well-being. There are a number of books that can help people to do this including Sonia Lubomirsky's The How of Happiness, Dina and Biswas Dina's Happiness etc. Positive psychologists have developed a number of techniques called Positive Psychology Interventions or PBIs that can make people happier. The PBIs include well-being enhancing activities such as being kind to others and identifying personal strengths. The PBIs boost mood immediately and are also very effective in improving physical and psychological health in the long term. They help by encouraging the development of resilience, 
insight, sense of purpose, optimism and altruism. A simple yet powerful way to enhance positive mood is by visualizing one's best possible self in the future. In a pioneering study, once a day for four consecutive days, participants were instructed to imagine that everything had gone as well as it possibly could and to write about it for 20 minutes. These individuals experienced a greater boost in positive mood than those who engaged in a neutral activity. Furthermore, this optimism exercise had remarkable health benefits. Individuals who wrote about their best possible selves had relatively less illness five months later. An association exists between kindness and happiness. Since happy people tend to engage in more pro-social behaviors, according to Lubomir's key king A. All, they demonstrated that the timing of kind acts, particularly if the acts are small, matters. The cultivation of gratitude has been found to promote well-being. Grateful thinking also can be effective coping strategy during difficult times. Lubomirsky Sheldon A. All showed that the cultivation of grateful thinking across a six-week period can produce a boost in well-being. Positive Psychotherapy Positive psychotherapy contrasts with standard interventions for depression by increasing positive emotion, engagement and meaning rather than directly targeting depressive symptoms. Due to overemphasis on problems, though psychology has done well in ameliorating a number of disorders, but it has lagged behind in enhancing human positives. Positive psychotherapy rests on the hypothesis that depression can be treated effectively by reducing its negative symptoms and by building positive emotions character strengths and meaning. It is assumed that directly building these positive resources may successfully counteract negative symptoms and may also buffer against their future relapse. Mental health promotion has not been given much attention as an end in itself. Subjective well-being refers to individuals' perceptions and evaluations of their lives in terms of their psychological functioning, affective states and social functioning. Sometimes positive mental health is used synonymously with subjective well-being. Psychological well-being encompasses self-acceptance, personal growth, purpose in life, environmental mastery, autonomy and positive relations with others. Social well-being involves social acceptance, social actualization, social contribution, social coherence and social integration. Seligman and colleagues developed positive psychotherapy as a way to treat depression by building positive emotions, character strengths and sense of meaning apart from reducing negative symptoms such as sadness. This therapy uses a combination of 12 exercises that can be practiced individually or in groups. Some of the examples are using your signature strengths that is identifying your top 5 strengths and trying to use them in normal ways daily. Next is three good things. Every evening write down three good things that happened that day and think about why they happened. Next, gratitude visit. Write a letter to someone explaining why you feel grateful for something they've done or said. 
read the letter to the recipient either in person or over the phone. Well-being therapy aims at recovery from depression and other affective disorders by making the patients look at the positive and heal negative aspects of life. Well-being therapy is based on the work of Ritz and her model of subjective well-being. Ritz's model consists of six tenets. Mastery of the environment, personal growth, purpose in life, autonomy, self-acceptance and positive relationships. Well-being therapy is much like cognitive behavioral therapy where a patient keeps a journal to keep track of the positive events that occur each day. Then the patient starts recognizing negative thoughts and beliefs that disrupt positive events. The ultimate goal is to challenge and eventually change negative ways of thinking to enable positive events to have more of an impact on the patient's life. Positive Prevention The job of psychologists is prevention of problems like depression, substance abuse, etc. This goal cannot be achieved by following the disease model. Rather, this can be attained by building competencies and strengths in the individual. Prevention in psychology also focuses on building strengths. Positive psychologists believe that possessing certain human strengths can provide a buffer against mental illness. These virtues include courage, optimism, interpersonal skills, hope, perseverance, etc. Positive psychologists believe that by identifying, amplifying and concentrating on these strengths in people at risk, effective prevention can be done. Theories and practices based on positive psychology are able to prevent many major emotional disorders. This not only enhances individual's physical and mental well-being, it also reorients psychology to its two neglected goals of making normal people stronger and more productive as well as helping one in actualizing their potential. By emphasizing more on well-being, positive psychology has challenged the conventional notion that mental health is equal to the absence of disease. Interventions that build on the positive aspects in people's life show great promise for enhancing well-being. To summarize, health is a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity according to the WHO. Positive health refers to well-being beyond the mere absence of disease. Positive health aims to identify health assets by determining factors that predict health and illness. Positive health is related to three existing approaches concerned with good health. Disease prevention, health promotion and wellness. Psychosocial resources are the skills beliefs, talents and personality factors that influence people's response to stressful events. They include self-esteem, optimism, sense of mastery, active coping skills and social support. Psychosocial resources have origin both in genes and in the early environment. The main interventions in positive psychology are aimed to nurture the three roots to happiness, pleasure, gratification and meaning. An important strategy is to cultivate psychosocial resources for improving well-being. Positive psychologists have developed a number of techniques that is positive psychology interventions that can make people happier. Positive psychotherapy contrasts with standard interventions for depression by increasing positive emotion, engagement and meaning rather than directly targeting depressive symptoms. 
Prevention in psychology focuses on building strength. Positive psychologists believe that possessing certain human strengths can provide a buffer against mental illnesses. 